For anyone that's never heard of Sword Art Online, the most telling thing about the protagonist, Kirito, is how a lot of anime fans call him Jesus-kun, which is all you need to know for how absolutely overpowered he is. There's nothing wrong with a little wish fulfillment for when you want an easy rush in this relentless world that just gets worse, but this story doesn't know how wish fulfillment works. The story is a weird imbalance of tones. People are dying every second they're stuck in a fatal video game, and only our protagonist is strong enough to do anything for poorly explained reasons? Oh, he's gonna do some fishing? Or save a girl's Tamagotchi? Or live in the woods with his wife and daughter instead of saving those many lives? Kirito is around 15 years old, by the way. You wouldn't be able to tell since he gets married with a kid, can fight adults without losing, and has enough maturity to be a responsible leader. At his age, he should have more flaws, or any flaws at all, since in a story that tells the audience in the beginning that anyone can die, he is not only immune to death, but has undone it twice. So let's see what we can do to fix that. What does he have that isn't pure power fantasy? Post-traumatic stress disorder. At least for a few minutes in the gun gale arc before a nurse talks him out of it. What if it's something that he has for the entire series? Distrust, anger, and a feeling of not belonging are common symptoms that fit him well. He was beaten up by his grandpa when he was a kid in canon. Anything involving you or loved one in danger can cause it. Now it seems in the series that it was caused when he killed some people in self-defense, and when this girl who looks like his sister dies and he couldn't save her. That last reason is blatant fridging because she only exists to be killed off to make the male protagonist sad. The abuse seems to have been only added to explain why he's good with swords, and to make his cousin slash sister fall in love with him. How about no? Instead, we explore what his grandpa did to him by actually doing the rewrite. Our young Kirito lives with his grandfather and his sister. I'm getting rid of the aunt and uncle for simplicity. His love for video games can just be from escapism. How does he get into the video game that will kill him for real if he dies in the game? Don't ask how it kills. It, it changes each season and it's always bad. From, oh yeah, the hardware was shipped out with the ability to kill, to, there's just a guy who breaks into your house while you're playing, but he'll only kill you when you die in game, to, the villain is going to upload their consciousness into the hero's real world body. Wow. Bad. Die for real games are a bad idea. How about no one is in a death game? So no tonal whiplash when the plot slows down. The conflict can instead be him in a gaming competition with a cash reward. A small family like his might be having money troubles. Grandpa probably doesn't approve of how he plans on make paying bills, but maybe Gramps doesn't know what he's doing this. Kids in those households are great at keeping secrets from their guardians, and sometimes from peers who genuinely care about them. More about that later. The gaming competition should have elements of teamwork. So maybe it's esports, but esports where the team members are strangers. If only for Kirito to make friends with people he just met and all the awkwardness that comes with it. We have Asuna, Elizabeth, Klein, and Shinon. There's another girl named Silica, and Shinon shouldn't up in the second season, but Silica and Beth don't have much going on for them, so I'm combining them. Well, Shinon is an interesting character that I want to add now. Mainly I want the bonds he forms with the other characters to matter. Because of this, I'm getting rid of the artificial intelligence characters. The theme of SAO is how virtual connections are as important as real ones. But treating the AI as people muddies this. Sure, in the game Soma, the personhood of AIs is an important tenet of the story. But I think in SAO's case, saying, the relationships I make with people through the internet are valid, is stronger without the tacked on takeaway my fake daughter and this Tamagotchi matter to me just as much as the survival of living humans. Plus, he doesn't actually have friends. His friend Klein goes away most of the story. Asuma is his girlfriend with emphasis on girl and not on friend. And every named girl is just a trophy for Kirito to earn. All other named male characters are just obstacles. Wait. There's Andrew. He's a male character that isn't an obstacle. But his presence is so minor that I've never heard him mentioned in discussions on SAO. I had to scour through the wiki to know his name. Wonder why? 
Anyway, the creator eventually realized Kirito needed friends, so he added one years later in the Alicization arc named Yujiro, because Yuji was used already for an obstacle guy, who fleshed out Kirito as a person and supported him. But then he was killed off so Kirito could be with Alice. Oh. Okay. Anyway, having Kirito require friends to succeed, while struggling to make them, is compelling. Sure, he can stab well, but he needs another stabber to cover for him when he needs a healer or two to fix him up. And he needs a tank to protect the team. Everyone supports each other without having one great man who rises above the masses. But does he accept the help? That's the inner conflict, and where I bring back the sister. What if the reason his family is broke and his grandpa hates him, or what he thinks is the only reason was just one factor in this mess we call life, is that his sister got into an accident and he is somewhat to blame for it. Which is why he has to be this all-powerful savior, this messianic figure that will let himself suffer for others, because he can't let anyone else get hurt for his failure. Games don't only let you beat bad guys, they let you be a good person with a sense of purpose to keep going, keep living, when you don't want to. That's the kind of escapism no one talks about. How do his friends help with that? Well, Shinon also has PTSD, so she can talk to him about it without either carrying the other by the end of the arc. Klein can be an example of positive masculinity. Beth can help with his self-worth and teach him to be more genuine. And Asuna can be his protector. No more, oh, they're equally strong, even though we keep making her a damsel. She's tougher than him, and that's okay. Her meat is huge, by which I mean muscles. Though, I will say, trans Shinon. And together they win the game and to get the money. Maybe they get the sister a brand new mobility aid. So there's something physical at stake, but not life-threatening. Not sure where else the story could go except to have the sister show up more. But there's one concept that the original does that I want to talk about before I end this video. Okay, so Kirito turns into a giant demon thing during the Elfland arc thing, which is not just my jam, but entire breakfast. And said demon form looks exactly like a deadly boss monster that he and Asuna fought, which has got to be unfortunate for both. But the show only uses it for him to beat up some dudes up once. Now let's go somewhere with it. Kirito enters the game of Elfland, but wants no part of the magic and flying because it's not what he's used to, so he sticks to swords. Not that different from the show. And hey, he's got all his good gear from the original game, but also manages to get a new item. Something went wrong in the conversion between games, and he gets this untested weapon that doesn't even have a graphic, but can be used in battle. He saves it for later, and then later comes when he gets his butt handed to him because everyone has magic and flying while he's got sharp sticks. He uses the item and turns into the giant demon to win. Great! But the battle ends with him still a demon. He tries to unquip the item, but it's not in his inventory or gear. So he's stuck at this big monster for the whole game that's strong and all, but can't enter most buildings? and most players will try to fight him thinking he's a high-level encounter. Including Asuna, who would definitely want to kill him because the boss he looks like killed at least three people. And maybe he can't talk so he can't explain himself. J just let me envision the angst of her beloved turning into a monster that caused her such grief. Is that too much to ask? Tug on my heartstrings so that I can feel something for the first time in months, please. And that's all I want to say about rewrite an essay, yo. I do have a few pages of writing based on some of the ideas mentioned with some new stuff too on my Patreon, titled, Brought to a New World as a Fairy, because the AI fairy I removed was cute, and I want to embarrass Kirito by making him cute instead. But maybe support a GoFundMe or donate to a charity right now because I don't have much else on there, and others truly need the money more. Like, comment, subscribe, and that junk. Oh yeah, the, these rewrites, both the hypothetical one here and the actual one I'm working on, would not have any of the pervert pandering of the original.
especially since so much of it involves young girls being sexually assaulted as the camera takes in every second of their discomfort. That happens a lot. Before I decide that anime is garbage, I'm gonna go watch Decadence. Bye!